Grisia fulvin is used occasionally, but is getting more and more difficult to obtain. And, and I know that uh, a lot of the drugs that were available of, of the companies have allowed the licenses to lapse and aren't uh, replacing it. And it's because really it was quite, uh, it was a drug that wasn't used a great deal. Uh, in cats, there were some issues with it. So when it was the only thing that was available, yes, we needed to use it. But now with the better drugs that we have, it, it is becoming a drug that is being consigned to the past to some degree. Can be used in dogs. It doesn't seem to cause any myelotoxicity. Uh, but of course, that can be a problem in cats. It is teratogenic. Um, and in cats, we know that, um, you know, that, that bone marrow suppression that they can get can be life-threatening. It's not dose dependent. The, the dose for uh, Grisia fulvin is very wide. Certainly in the literature, you can move anything from 25 mg per kg up to about 110 mg per kg. And if they are going to get some sort of drug reaction, it doesn't seem to be uh, dose dependent. It's, it's idiosyncratic. I think it's very important that uh, if you have a cat with FELV or FIV, Grisia fulvin doesn't seem to be the drug of choice because we seem to get more side effects with that. And I would always um, go on and treat beyond a negative culture for uh, three to four weeks to make sure that we've really, really eradicated uh, the, grisi, the, the uh, dermatophytosis. Ketoconazole is uh, an azole drug and it, uh, it we believe works by causing an inhibition of cell wall chitin synthesis. Obviously chitin is an important part of the cell wall in fungi and it inhibits cytochrome P450 enzyme, which is one of the reasons it is effective in, uh, in, in using Cushing's disease. Um, so obviously it is a drug that can have some endocrinological effects whilst we're also trying to treat the uh, dermatophytosis. And in fact, we know it also affects sex hormones and all manner of other hormones. So it's, it's a drug that is, um, not as specific perhaps as we would like uh, to just treating the fungus that's there. Again, cats seem to get some liver problems with it, as can dogs. And I think it's a drug that whilst I've, I've always used a lot of ketoconazole, both for dermatophytosis and for malassezia, it's a drug that I'm starting to move away from, partly because it's not licensed for use in dogs and cats. But also I think that uh, Itraconazole, which we'll mention in a bit, seems to be a much safer product. And some strains of m do appear to be resistant to ketoconazole. Dosing at about 10 mg per kg twice, uh, once a day. And if you can just make out on these photographs, this was the dog I mentioned before with the trichophyte on Mentagrophytes infection, which I think he'd caught from, from going down uh, rat holes and so on. And this is the dog a month later. Still quite bald, but the scaliness had gone and uh, some hair was regrowing back. That, this dog was quite interesting. It went on and did very well. A few months later, although we had done negative testing cultures on it, it again got its uh, trichophyte on back. And uh, obviously the, the, there is then a worry about how good its cell-mediated immunity is. And we're in fact still treating that dog. Uh, itraconazole is sold in uh, the UK as itrafungal, as the, the Janssen product, and uh, it really is the gold standard now. I've been very impressed since I, I've been able to get hold of this drug at how effective it is at uh, clearing cats with dermatophytosis. I have less experience using it in dogs. It is the licensed product in cats. It's not licensed for use in dogs, but of course, uh, you know, can be used with uh, written consent. Toxicity problems seem to be much rarer uh, compared with the other two drugs that I've already mentioned. And it actually works similarly on the cytochrome P450 enzyme, but is more specific for the fungus than the mammalian cytochrome P450. And therefore, we don't seem to get these endocrinological side effects that we can get with ketoconazole. So, you know, it isn't a drug that you can use to treat Cushing's disease with. And, it, and it's quite fascinating. This drug persists for a long time in the stratum corneum, in the hair and the nail. And this is one of the reasons why, um, 
Janssen have set this up as a every other week dosing for three circles because if you don't give the, the cat a rest in that middle week then the dose goes up and up and up and up and up and potentially we could run into some toxicity problems so um, that is uh, the reason why we have this every other day dosing and dose rate 5 to 10 mg per kilogram once a day sometimes you find that you're on the 5 mg per kilogram once a day dose and after you know a month six weeks things aren't moving in the right direction as you would have expected to you know you're quite within your rights at that time to uh, to double the dose up it is you know a safe product Tabinafine, this was reported, as I said, at uh, the Florence conference by Dr. Doug Deborah from uh, Wisconsin University. Very early stages of research, but he's found that pulse dosing may work. Um, does seem to have an effect on the ALT in cats, but they've not seen any clinical toxicity. It may work where MCANIS resistance has been encountered, and uh, the higher doses seem to work better. So between about 20 to 40 milligrams per kilogram once daily. So it is a drug to be aware of. Certainly if you're having problems getting itrafungal to work for you and you are also treating the environment and treating the uh, the uh, topical uh, with topical treatments as well, then tabinafine is a drug to have uh, up your sleeve. Lufenuron, very interesting story. We, we had a paper ooh, 10, 10 years ago now it was from uh, an Indian uh, vet and they'd seen that uh, lufenuron was being given to cats where there'd been a dermatophyte outbreak and many of the cats got better. Now the problem of course with, with dermatophytosis as we've mentioned previously it is a self-curing condition so usually give the cat or the dog enough time and they will sort themselves out. So the reason that people thought lufenuron might work is of course because it is a chitin inhibitor in insects so perhaps it will inhibit the uh, the fungal chitin as well i think the the, the work that's been done and um, you know when the actual paper was looked at and, and and inspected in more detail it was felt that it wasn't uh, robust enough to really prove that that was the case uh, so i don't think it works Novartis, I think, have shied away from promoting it as a ringworm product. And so if that is something that you're still considering, probably doesn't work. 